Um, plant obviously was not included. The plant is from Trader Joe's, which is a surprisingly good and cheap place to get plants if you're interested. But I picked up this wooden pot uh, in Bhutan. Uh, there's not a whole lot of shopping opportunities in Bhutan. They're very, um, you know, spiritual culture. They're not focused on material items and you won't see like lots of souvenir stores. There won't be lots of vendors kind of pushing you to buy things, which is a really nice, refreshing change. Um, Bhutan, in fact, didn't even have a currency until about the 1960s. They were on a barter system. So definitely not a shopping culture. Um, I'd been on a hiking trip, so I'd been up in the mountains for about a week, and then we came down and we went to the capital city of Timpu, and they have this really cool craft market set up there where you, um, vendors set up the, these little booths and you can meet the, the people that are actually making the crafts, so it was really cool. I got to meet the person that um, painted this pot, and um, it was just cool to see something that wasn't really mass produced. So I picked this pot because it was really colorful and Bhutan is actually a very colorful country. There's a lot of prayer flags and um, the national dress that people wear is very colorful. So I liked having something that was so vivid and vibrant and now it sits in my home and it reminds me of my colorful trip to Bhutan. Hi, this is Sarah, Deputy Executive Editor at Smarter Travel and this is Sylvie. And uh, we're here to talk today about my favorite travel souvenir which is this dish, bowl, plate, that I bought in Morocco about 13 years ago. Don't actually remember exactly which city we bought it in. I think it was Fez at a market, and it was my first experience of haggling. And I'd never done it before. I had a feeling I wasn't going to be that good at it, and I wasn't. So I believe the vendor was asking 150 dirhams, which is about or at the time was about 15 US dollars. And I wanted to pay 100 dirhams or 10 US dollars. And so I probably should have, you know, made an initial offer of maybe 50 or, or 60, but instead I just went right in at 90 dirhams and of course ended up paying 120, which was halfway between my initial offer and what the vendor was offering. And it was just kind of an awkward experience. I know that both my boyfriend, now husband, and my uh, and the vendor were actually laughing a little bit at me because I, I really wasn't good at haggling. But it was a fun experience. I The difference was only a couple of dollars in what I paid for this lovely dish. And it makes a good story and a good memory. Hi, my name is Carol, and my favorite souvenir that I've ever purchased is this collection of postcards from Paris. So my college roommate and I were both studying abroad in Europe at the same time, in Portugal and in Italy, and we decided it would be really fun to meet up for a weekend in Paris, and so we did. And I just bought these different spots around the city. I got this one in a gift shop just outside of the Eiffel Tower. So we took the elevator up and we got macarons and coffee at the cafe that's on one of the levels and had those snacks while looking out at the just beautiful, amazing views of the city. So that was really magical and I like to have this to remember it by. And then this one is actually my favorite. I didn't get it in Paris, I got it at Versailles. We decided we wanted to set aside a whole day to visit the palace at Versailles and we toured the whole palace, which was amazing. It was just insane. We saw all the famous fountains up front. We went all around the property, front to back. And by the end of the day, we had realized we had spent eight hours at Versailles and walked a total of 10 miles around the entire property. So we got a really good workout in and it was really fun. You totally lose track of time. It's like being in a different world. And yeah, that is why these are my favorite souvenirs. Hi, it's Christine. The souvenir I chose uh, is this spoon. Um, it was the it's my favorite, but it, it really, it was also, I think, the first souvenir that I remember buying. I originally got it for my mom. I got it when I was on exchange in Japan when I was in eighth grade. So many, many years ago now. Um, and at some point during my 20s, I, I'm assuming I asked her very politely if I could have it, and she said yes. I may have just taken it from her kitchen. I don't know. Um, so I still remember the place I was where I got it. I, um, it was a tiny, we were hiking and we came upon just a little, like a tiny village in one of the shops, uh, sold hand carved wooden kitchenware, um, mostly a lot of spoons and utensils and things like that. And I just thought this had a pleasing shape. Um, and you can actually, you can see sort of the wooden, the, the carving marks in the wood. Um, 
and it just it's incredibly soft i use it probably three times a week which adds up to thousands of uses over the last two and a half decades and it just every time every time i use it i think of japan and i think of just sort of the magic of travel and i feel very lucky that i was able to have this travel experience so early on that really, you know, definitely had a pretty major influence on my life. Um, all right, thanks. Hi everyone, I'm Shannon from Smarter Travel and I'm gonna share with you my favorite travel souvenir, uh, which I have right here. This is a silk scarf that I got in China. Um, it's super detailed. I think if you can probably see in the light, it's got some really pretty gold flecks in it. And I got it in a city called Suzhou, which is outside Shanghai. I went last year um, and I just loved it. It's called the Venice of China um, because it's on the Grand Canal in China, outside of Shanghai, as I said. Um, and it's beautiful, it's super peaceful, but at the same time, it's a very large city. Um, and what makes it peaceful is it's got all of these UNESCO designated Chinese gardens and I got this scarf at a silk workshop it was called Suzhou Silk Factory number three and it's open to the public it's free to enter um, they just sort of hope you buy something because everything is handmade and a lot of the locals do work there and they hand make these designs and you can watch them take the silkworm threads and put them through the process you can learn all about how they make everything and of course at the end you can go shopping. Um, I've worn it to weddings, I've worn it out in public. Lately I like to do this little maneuver that I saw in a scarf wrapping video that you can sort of wrap it around your neck twice. So I've gotten a lot of use out of this, which I love um, about souvenirs. The best souvenirs are definitely ones that you can use day after day for special occasions and sort of hang in your apartment for decoration. I just think it's beautiful and it reminds me of how much I loved visiting China and I really hope to go back one day and get another one. Hey guys, I'm Ashley from Smarter Travel and today I am going to show you my favorite travel souvenir to date. Um, that's really hard to choose. I try and always bring back a postcard or a print from everywhere I go. You can kind of see I start hanging them up or um, print out one of my photos that I've taken. Um, so I have a large collection of travel souvenirs and memories but i guess my favorite that i use a lot is this straw bag that we got in the marrakesh medina now these are pretty kind of all over the place now with fast fashion but i know mine's special because it was handmade um and we actually got lost in the medina if you've ever been to morocco or any um, kind of souk or Medina, you'll know they are very intimidating and kind of crazy. So we had found these bags and we were really excited about them. Um, I was on an intrepid travel trip uh, through Morocco and we ended in Marrakesh. Um, and so we asked if we could uh, buy them and we were seeing that they were doing like personalized sewing. Uh, so we, we asked um, if we could get something embroidered. Mine says, rosé all day and um, then we had to leave the bags and we weren't sure if they were actually going to um, one we didn't know if we could come back and find them and two we didn't know if they actually were just ripping us off um, so the man who owned his little stall sent them off to his mother every night to get them embroidered so miraculously we went back the next day and they were there and ready and we were really excited um, and then getting this back on the plane was definitely difficult but it made it and I use it at the beach all the time. Thank you.